Welcome to the show that has it all. This is the Bet Red Super League. What a game! Champions, challengers, newcomers, leagues fearful. Hold on tight. This is the Bet Red Super League 2024. There's nothing like league. Yeah. from the Warrington Golf Club here in Cheshire in the company of over 120 members and their guests. <laughs> Thanks as always go to our supporters, Betfred, Rugby League's major sponsors, and we are here in the company of Rugby League legends. Paul Cullen, the former head coach of Warrington, is here. We also have the director of rugby at Warrington, Gary Chambers, former legendary player, Big Bad Benny Westwood, and also Richard Marshall. That is our panel for this week. Gentlemen, welcome, one and all. Now, let's try and make it, let's try and make it not all about Warrington if we can, but I think the, the one elephant in the room that we have about the Warrington Wolves at the moment is the future of the head coach, Sam Burgess. Now, the rumours are rife in Australia that Sam is on his way back to the NRL and the Sydney Rapitos at the end of the season, if not before, because Jason Dimitriou, the coach, has been sacked this week in Sydney. We're lucky enough to have a director of Warrington, Mike Lomax, here in the room with us, so let's put him on the spot right away. Mike, true or false? Sam Burgess, Rapitos or Wolves? Well, that's a, sort of like a, a too bad question, isn't it? So, he's not going to South Sydney, I can tell you that. Really? Not in his, at his term, he signed a two-year contract with Warrington Wolves. Uh, he's a man of honour. He's loving the club, he's loving the environment. Uh, and there's no way Sam is going anywhere. Really? For two years, absolutely. Yeah. Not. in the room to that news that that is the club's party line or is that something you are a hundred and ten percent certain of i am 200 percent certain of because i've since <coughs> excuse me since sam's come over i've got to know him personally he's a, such a humble guy forget what he's done at rugby league judging him as a person and show sure of gas and everybody that's in touch with the club the environment that he's created he's such a passionate guy Humble again, I keep saying that word, but and also it demands respect because of what he's done in the game. It's you know, is is it's unbelievable around the environment and uh, and it and it's not just the big name players. I remember early doors before the before the first team squad joined and he was out running with the academy players. It's one instant that and I got this off a agent uh, in Sibbet. Uh, he got a phone call and he said. Uh, it's Leon Hayes, basically, who's just had a horrendous injury. Uh, and after training, Sam's made a point to run across the field to him and put his arm around him. He said, Leon, are you, uh, are you okay? You didn't look like yourself today. And I said, no, I'm fine. And he was literally fine. But it's the fact that he made that effort run straight across the field to a kid that he's known for about four or five weeks. And, you know, just, just, it's just the nature of the man. And he will not go back to Sydney, I can tell you now, for the next two years. He's a man of honour and he will definitely honour his contract. And I can see him stay more than two years. So. Well, that's great news. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
you mentioned, you mentioned. I actually, I should ask, I should ask Gary Chambers this really, rather than rather than Mike Lomax. Uh, with all due respect, Mike, but thanks for that. And the people here tonight will be absolutely thrilled. I must ask Gary about uh, young Leon because that injury he suffered at the weekend is absolutely tragic, not only for him but for the club as well, because he has such a bright future. Oh yeah, he's been. I think uh, we, we've said all the way through. He's. You know, we're actively pushing our youth, and we have to do that. We have to to get these people who are, who are heavily invested to give that extra percent. And you know, we've got a fantastic youth system, and and he's he's the lead on that. He's the future of our club. I've just I've just been on the phone there. He's just had his operation done then. Um, massive success. The guy who we've we've got to do. We sort of sourced um, the best guy. He, he did. Um, he, he's done some really big names like George North and uh, Gareth Bale. So he's, he's got the best treatments and he's, he's down in South Wales now recovering and it's, yeah, he went really well. That's great news and, and he seems a, a really, really good kid and he seems to know his way. People have said to me, it reminds them so much of a very young Andy Gregory. Well, if he's a tenth of the player Andy Gregory was, you're going in the right direction. He's he sort of, um, and I don't say this lightly, I mean, Rich, Rich is a big influence on him as well. He epitomises everything that we want out of our club. So just just for little things like, you know, at the end of a game, he, he helps us tidy up so the changing room's always left better than what we find them. Um, he's the one who, uh, and they all don't do it, I'm, I'm not going to say they do, but they will do by the end of the year. The, when we get off the bus, they, they tidy the bus up, make sure that's right. Um, and, and he's always the one who grabs stuff from underneath the bus, walks into the um, physio room and puts his little bag over his shoulder and away he goes. And, and a lot of them do that. They all push chairs away at the end of training. And we, the, the small things, and he, he leads on all that. He's a fantastic young man. And, you know, he basically leaves two streets on Orford Lane um, from the ground. And he, he epitomises what, what we want. He's, he's one of our own and he, he loves the club and he's, he's good to be around. Things seem to be going in the right direction, all right? Yeah, we, we know where we are. Um, are we happy where we are? We're happy, yeah. But, but, but we're really happy with what's going on behind the scenes and we're really happy with what our youth system is and we're really happy with the way that, you know, Rich and Sam and Gleese and that promote the kids through and, 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 and we'll keep doing it. Aaron Lindop starts on the wing, you know, tomorrow night he's back in again and, you know, there's, there's, low, there's more coming, you know. We, we, we couldn't be happy with what's underneath and, and we will play them, and they will come through, and and, and you know it's um, they'll be they'll be part of a big future for this club. Fantastic, and you as director of rugby, therefore, in essence, Sam Burgess's boss will be delighted to hear what Mike Lomax has just said. He's there for two years. You won't be getting thrown in at the deep end again anytime soon, by the sound of things. No, I don't want it again. Rich can have it next time. <laughs> no, 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 no. The heart attack last time. It took me blood pressure last time. Didn't they remember? So they did this big drive for, for blood pressure down at the club and said, would you go on it? I, I took it in the stand, uh, put the thing on my arm for the blood pressure. Nearly had me in hospital within 10 minutes of that time. Your blood pressure's through the roof, so I'm not doing what I'm doing again. So. Um, yeah, he's a good bloke, he's, he's, you know, he's good to be around. He epitomises what we want. We took a bit of a punch on him, didn't we, to bring him in, but we knew that he would he graphs, he's in early, he's in, you know, we train early in the morning, he's in there, at, you know, he's in 5.30, he graphs. The lads love him, he has an ability, a unique ability to be really friendly with them, he's, he, you know, he's one of them, he's, um, but, but he knows when to say no, enough's enough, and, you know, when he gets up in front of the screen or he goes in there to deliver, or he'll fix them up, you know, they love him, they, you know, because they respect what he is, but also his knowledge. Um, yeah, he's and he's fine. You know, Mike's exactly right. He, he won't go anywhere. He won't go anywhere, and he, and he probably, you know, he'll probably stay a little bit longer as well. That's music to the ears of everyone in this room. I don't know about the music to the ears of everyone else in the Super League. Which, uh, if he doesn't stay for two years, it sounds like you've got the job. You're going to get the gig. No, no, I'm, uh, I'm really happy doing what I'm doing. Um, I'll just echo what, what Gaz said about Sam. He's been a, a breath of fresh air for the club. Um, just, just one thing that struck with me is uh, when, when it, one of his first speeches before, uh, before the game, our first game, he, he spoke about building the badge, you know, and I thought the identity of the club and he was proper invested from, from day one and 
Um, you know, he's, he's got such an aura about him, but he's also um, a smart, intelligent young coach as well. Uh, and I've learned quite a lot of him already. Uh, uh, Gaz tells me to challenge him all the time, and but he's all right, if he's going to back me up, I'll challenge him. If he's not, I won't. <laughs> I don't blame you because he's a, a he's a big lad and B he's a, a, got a hell of a reputation in the game. Clive Churchill medal winner in the grand final. He played on with a fractured cheekbone and won the, the, the Clive Churchill medal when he played. And it was James Graham who chinned him, wasn't it? In the very first tackle of the match, remember? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, I do remember it. And I, I met uh, James Graham. We went to Australia. We, we, he did a great job for us promoting that tour. Last time we spoke on your podcast. Um, and I met Jammer over there and we spoke about that because Sam had just got the job and then we, we talked about that and um, yeah, they get their really good mates. Um, yeah, it's an exciting time at Warrington at the moment. Um, I just, obviously Leon's fantastic. We've got Adam Allroyd, Max Wood, we've got a load, Aaron Lindop, we've got a load of young kids coming through and Sam's not a threat, afraid to throw them in. No, the list is endless, isn't it? I mean, it's a tribute to the job that you two are doing. Oh, no, it's, it's the club. It, it's, you know, the, we, we're going places. Uh, you know, the scholarship last night, uh, the beat Wigan, the beat Saints a couple of weeks ago, our reserves and academy are doing really well. And obviously the programme, it's not just about rugby as well. Gary's really, you know, he's part of education, his background. We educate the players off the field. Uh, there's so much that goes on. Rugby's probably a, a 20th of, of, of the, of the, of the programme, the diet that these players get. And, you know, I've got two boys on the programme as well and I wouldn't have them anywhere else. Fabulous. And it's, when you hear that, a Warrington club, whatever level has beaten Wigan and has beaten the Saints. It's not bad, is it, fellas? That's not bad. Let's talk to someone who's been there, seen it, got the t-shirt, got the scars, got everything else. Paul Cullen, former coach, of course, former great player of the Warrington Wolves as well. What advice would you give to Sam Burgess? The conversations I've had with Sam have been about one thing and one thing only, identity. And I, I generally think, and I say this with respect, there's some points in uh, the, over the last 20 years where the club has lost its identity. Um, you know, we never used to be a wealthy club. We're now probably one of the wealthiest clubs in the world. Uh, and that has to be respected. We can make mistakes, but we, we ought to learn from those mistakes. I think that's what Warrington are doing at the moment. We've made mistakes previously and now we're stopping making those mistakes with the type of coaches that we're employing and the type of players that we're bringing through. And I, I heard one absolutely horrific thing um, a few years ago by a Warrington employee that um, there's something wrong with the postcode. There's not enough Warringtonians good enough to play for Warrington. I, I, I nearly choked and then I nearly choked the blow that said it. <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing wrong with the WA. There absolutely isn't. You know, there might not be another Paul Sculthorpe or another Sam Burgess or another Andrew Johns or another Lee Brace. Um But if you look at St Helens, when a lot of their success was built on Sean Long as a seven, uh, and, you know, the major halfback in Kieran Cunningham as a nine, you know, and two brilliant players and two lively individuals, well, the next one was James Roby and Johnny Lomax. St Helens have learned from the mistakes and Warrington are beginning to slowly learn from the mistakes. Lee Brace was mercurial. He really was. The next one can, might not be as good, uh, and that's about the identity. You know, the one pound lottery, learn from it. That's the identity of the club. People on a production line at Ryland's giving you a quid. That's what it means. That's, that's about culture. Culture is not about some players having a drink and misbehaving. It's, 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 a, it's a misnomer. The culture is about having the right people at the club doing the right thing for the right reason. You get enough of them, you've got a chance. You've got too many wrong uns, and you've got no chance and the club are moving in that direction. Do you think we'll ever see the day again when an Andrew Johns will come and play for the Warrington Wolves? Well, if he does, it has to be a bonus. You know, I, I, was, a, I was a part of the Andrew Johns scenario, but that was um, when I've literally said to Simon Moran about 10, de 10 weeks out from the end of the season, in our, in our, we used to meet twice a week, that um, Lee Braz is on his last legs, in terms of injury, and Nathan Wood is hanging on by his fingernails. Have we got any money support? I've got a couple of blokes knocking around in the lower divisions that I'd like to bring to the club, because when Nathan goes, and when Lee Brayers goes with an injury, we're in the top four, I just can't guarantee us keeping in the top four if I lose Lee Brayers or Nathan Woods. Because I keep moving John Clark around and I can't keep doing it forever. We haven't really, I've, I've used my plan B, plan C and plan, plan D. 
And he went, right, well, I'm meeting Andrew Johns' agent. I'll ask if he wants to come. And I went, oh, right. Anyway, Simon, now we've got past that. I hope you have a great day in London at the Lords. Can I go and have a look and talk to this kid from Rockstill? Have you got any money for it? He rang me two days later and said, it's done. And I went, what's done? He went, Andrew Johns, he's landed on Wednesday. <laughs> and the club to this very day still benefit from the fact Andrew Johns came for two or three games because the next signing was Adrian Mawler, who we invited to the club that night. He sat in the stand, who was company playing for the Sydney Roosters. We don't sign... We don't sign Andrew Johns for three games, we don't get Adrian Morley. And Adrian Morley doesn't become the club captain and lift the Challenge Cup three times. You know, so it worked then, but Andrew was really a bonus on top of, we're in the top four after doing most of the work all season, and he just added a little bit of something. Now, we can't then go and sign a Chris Sandow and expect him to be Andrew Johns, because he's not. That's the point of making. The next, the next Andrew Johns has to be Leon Hayes, and Leon Hayes has to be Leon Hayes, not Andrew Johns. And that's the way the club's moving. We've got 120 Warrington fans, well, 118 maybe, <laughs> Warrington fans in the room. Does anyone want to ask any of the boys a question and give me a day off for a minute or two? Yes, we've got a couple down here at the back of the room. First of all, name and club support, and what's your question, sir? Steve, what is the support this club? Uh, to be realistic, Consider we've got a chance against Huddersfield in a far nice time. And this is the Challenge Cup semi final uh, with a chance to get through to Wembley. And that would be Sam Burgess's, after 13 games, I think he would be on his way to Wembley in match 14 if they beat the Huddersfield Giants. Is it Warrington's turn to get back to Wembley this year? Can you beat the Giants? No, we can beat them. Of course, we can beat them. Um, I think if we play our best game and they play theirs, and we beat them quite convincingly. Uh, when we attack them, hit well, and, and you know when we, we we're quite confident. If you know without going into it all, we, if we take teams into a grind, that's when we're at our best. We you know we take them and we, and we get them at the back end of games. We're starting to do that really really well. We 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 land in a position, we kick well, we chase hard, but we keep doing it. We're doing it. That's when we're at our best. And if you see us against St. Helens, we, we we took them into a dark place. They fit, they're really fit and they're athletic and they play tough for each other. And when they strike and when they hit like that, then they're tough to beat. They've shown that. So if we do that, and you know, then yes, we'll win. I've got no doubt about it. You know, I think you know, the group that we've got um, are, are really united and um, I, I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it to happen. Benny Westwood is here, Super Benny, who didn't know he was coming tonight. Another, another big favourite, another legendary figure of the, of the club. Um, first of all, first question, right eye, black, what on earth's going on? Oh, it's not what you think. <laughs> uh, a work incident. Uh, uh, I had a disagreement with a, a breeze block at work and uh, you know, it, it got one on me, but uh, I'll have him next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will. Ben, I know you have a role in the, the club at the moment and you see what goes on at Warrington. Um, do you, at the back of your mind, sometimes think, you know, I wish I'd be still out there playing now with this fellow at the, at the helm and Sam Burgess? Yeah, of course, I do. Uh, you know, I, I think it all the time. Uh, you know, it's, it, retirement's quite hard, and it's, especially for the first few years, it was very difficult. I can remember when, I first, when the first year, uh, well, I retired at the end of 19, and the first game of 2020, I, I was working my first day at the club doing the, the, the corporate side of the boxes and stuff upstairs. And they were against Wigan. I can't cope with this. You know what, what was the next this, next game at home? St. Helens. Uh, it, you know, but it, it took me a couple of years, but yeah, of course I'd, I'd love to be able to play. And you know, in my head, I probably think I still can, but. Uh, I don't think the body will let me, and uh, I'm just not quite quick enough or faster. I, uh, Gary Chambers will tell you, you know, every time I see him, I go, it's the reserves game this week. Uh, <laughs> just throw me in there, and uh, I'm actually quite serious when I say that. I think he thinks I'm joking. But I think we'll always think that we've still got it all, we're still able to do it, but... Uh, you know, I, I, my time had come, and uh, you know, like, it was a great time, and you know, we won some stuff while we were playing, so we had a, 
No, I'm not complaining. No, you shouldn't complain at all. And I, I often think, you know, there are so many ex-players now moving into the media, moving into Sky Sports. Well, I, now that I think, well, yeah. I, I think you could do a job if you could just keep control a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Put a word in for me then. No, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm long gone. I'm like you. I'm long gone. I'm having this argument with Brad Carney at the minute, uh, and I keep texting him. I could be the kind of Roy Keane of of uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Anyway, I got into text and I says, text and tell me what I go on Sky Sports and uh, uh, <laughs> you just <laughs> you don't want to know what he said. <laughs> well, I do, but I think we'd be, we'd be, uh, we'd be thrown off the air uh, immediately. But uh, I mean, it's great to see you looking in, in perfect shape, and I've noticed you. On match days, you're in uh, you're in collars and ties and uh, club blazers. You look the part. Well, it suits me down to ground, doesn't it? I think that's I think. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> uh, but no, it's uh, no, it's great that the club have looked after me, and uh, you know, I've been doing it for four or five years now, and uh, you know, I, I get a chance to come and speak to all the sponsors, I'll speak to your know, friends and, and, and sponsors, and. Uh, Hopefully make them laugh and all that rugby league humour comes out and uh, yeah, hopefully they stay, <laughs> hopefully they stay in touch. But uh, but no, no, life life's all right. It's, it's good after rugby. That's good to know, isn't it, Benny Westman? Yeah. 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 There's lots happening, isn't there, at the moment in the world of, of rugby league? Coaches are coming and going, and uh, Richie Myler. Richie Myler is director of rugby at Hull FC and is now looking to replace Tony Smith. Gary Chambers is director of rugby at the Warrington Wolves. I'm not suggesting for one minute you're thinking of going to Hull, Gary, but uh, what advice would you give Richie Myler? It's a big commitment. It, it is a big commitment. I mean, I'm lucky, you know, my kids are growing up and. You know, I have, a, I have a, my wife's really um, well understanding at times, but you know, but she she is, you know, for someone like him with a young family and and, and a, you know he's he's got other kids as well. That would... I mean, we all say that Hull is a sleeping giant. You know, the city of Kingston upon Hull. If if that city is doing well in rugby league, rugby league is is thriving. Uh, but at the moment, the black and whites are doing anything but thrive, are they? You know, the odd thing I didn't. I, I found this out this year when you're trying to sign players and, and you're trying to bring players and that in, you know, to, to try and, I have spoke to Richie about this, to try and get players to go over to Hull and if you're an old, you want to say an old, but, you know, to get players to go there. The Kiwis love it. If you can sign Kiwi, what I said to them was go for Kiwis. The Kiwis seem to love it there and they, they, get, they get a lot of joy out of being there, but to get players from over this side to travel over and, and commit and sign, it's, 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 it's really difficult. You, you, you're working against a real tight, tight salary cap. They're going to have to pay extra money. It's, it's, it's 10, 15, 20 grand extra on a player that you would maybe get here for 20 grand less. He's going to have to pay you to get them in there. Well, there's supposed to be money moving in uh, to Hull FC, uh, but the most important thing, uh, Rich, uh, is the choice of new coach. I mean, all sorts of names on the list. I've read Sean Wayne. I've read Jason Dimitri, who's just left the South Sydney. Uh, club, and as we've heard, will not be replaced by Sam Burgess, and I've also heard Lee Breers is a possibility for the Black and Whites. What do you think? Um, obviously, uh, Simon Griggs is a, is, a, is a real good friend of mine. Uh, obviously, we play a hall this week. Um, I think he'd be a, I think he'd be in with a good shout for me. Uh, he, he ended his career um, through injury. Came out of Halifax, where I was coaching, did a real good job there. As a, as a player coach, um, and, and obviously he's, he's, he's running the reins now with uh, with Franny Cummins, I believe. I think he'd be great. Uh, Braz has done a great job, hasn't he, over there? And, you know, club legend at this club. Um, it's a big club, though, isn't it? Hull. It is a big club, uh, and a sleeping giant. And um, you know, it'd, it'd have to be a, uh, an experienced coach. If it wasn't going to be someone internally, I think it'd have to be an experienced coach, really. I just wonder, uh, Mike, just just to bring you back in in this conversation about the new whole coach for a moment. Do you think Warrington, I mean obviously you've done yourselves a great favour by bringing Sam Burgess in, but Sam Burgess was the most talked about signing of last winter. And everyone, is everyone now in the game trying to emulate Warrington and getting the next Sam Burgess, if there is a next Sam Burgess? Well that's a, 
I don't think there is. There's not a Sam Burgess out there. And uh, everyone says we took a punt on it, but we listened to people who's so highly respected in the game. You know, it, it's, you know, we had Matthew Johns on, we had all the high coaches that had been under Sam and saying how good. In fact, Matthew Johns called him, he, he's the modern day Mal, really. He's done what he did. He'll do what he'll do at Warrington, uh, what he did at Newcastle, you know, and uh, so nothing comes higher than that. And then when you meet the guy, I think, I think all, getting back to Hall anyway, all got bigger issues there, mate. Uh, our directive at Warrington, I mean, we're this club that everyone thinks that Simon Rand buys the next player, buys the next player. We've changed all that. We're, we're looking to invest within, and we invest in Warrington. And a guy that started this 10 years ago, it's a generational thing. You can't all of a sudden bring people from youth and bring people from your own town. It doesn't happen overnight. And there's a guy called Neil Kelly in our foundation who did this big hit 25. And the idea was to go to every club, because <clears throat> when I first sat on the Youth Development Board, we had age groups from Rylands, from Crossfields. We have seven, seven amateur clubs, community clubs as they call. And there wasn't one age group from under sevens to under, under 16s where all, all seven of them clubs were represented. In under sevens, it was five, in under eights, it was four. So what Neil started, he started going to these amateur clubs, creating like a, a pool, <coughs> like a tournament, and then giving the feeder to Crossfield. So we got 25 players at Crossfield, 25 at Wollstone, 25, at, and we did this for all the amateur clubs. So it starts at seven, 25 players, and, and, and then they go up to eights, then they go up to nines. And now we, we've got the likes of the that aren't taking any more kids in. That's never happened before. And the basis, I mean, Cole touched on it before, you've got to bring players. I mean, it's no mistake that Leeds, Leeds who are struggling at the moment, but you, you've got St. Anne's and Wigan, everything's from within. They've got 10 players coming from their academy that knows about Warrington Wolves. So you're only having to do the signings for maybe six or seven or five or six. Where those, us at Warrington, before all this youth was coming up, we were doing like 40, you know, bringing 14 players in from everywhere. And it's very difficult to do that, you know. And you look at Leeds now, there's nobody coming from their academy. They've probably got five. So they're having to just bring people in from everywhere. The big thing, and like Cullen said, is what's behind the badge. It's not just about just bringing players in for the quick, right? What's my salary and everything else like that. So, so, so I think things are changing. And it's no longer, I mean, I mean central funding from Sky, uh, 42 million we were getting 10 years ago, we're now getting 21 million. You know what I mean? It's just it's tough. So you've got to bring people through. It's a good job there's a multi-millionaires like you behind the, uh, <laughs> behind the scenes at, uh, at clubs like Warrington. I've got an, another question from a, a guy in the corner, I'm delighted to say. Yeah, thank you. I'd just like to ask about ING, what the, what the thoughts are really and, and what kind of they're bringing to the game. And, you know, we've got London come up this year that effectively are just doomed. Uh, we've got kind of Bradford, a massive sleeping giant in the, in the championship. So. You know, what's the thoughts on ING, what they're doing? And um, where maybe do you see the game in the next three, four, five years? Is it a 10 team Super League, 12 team, 14 team? W where are we going? That's a massive question, and it's something that we are still waiting the answer for. ING have got all these plans. You're right about London. They came in on one Saturday, Sunday weekend, and even before a ball was kicked in this season, they were told they were rated 23rd, 24th, and they wouldn't be in Super League next year, which seems. Ben, seems a nonsense to me. Jesus, you know what I had to do Okay. <laughs> okay, have a think, I'll be back. <laughs> I'll ask the question to Paul Cullen then. Paul, you're out the game, I'm out the game now. You know, it's difficult for Mike to make comment and, and Gary and Rich. Benny is an ambassador and is obviously worried to death about politicians. <laughs> What, what do you think about AMG? Honestly, I don't, I don't honestly know that much about them apart from what I've heard is it seems like we're rehashing a lot of stuff we've already done and tried and I hope we've not paid an absolute fortune 
to try something that we tried and failed in the past, and that just is my kind of feeling with it. You know, um, franchises, promotion, mm. relegation, how many more times have we got to ask that same question? And I, I generally don't think it matters that much. I think the game is in a very, very healthy state, and the moment we stop trying to chase football, stop trying to chase rugby union, because we'll never get there and we'll never beat them, just concentrate on who we are and what we do. And I think we do that very, very well. Um, you know, what I'm hearing and seeing, and I knew it already from Warrington, that's the way forward. Build the club, you know, Warrington might not be playing as well now as they have been when they've, when they've won Challenge Cup finals and got to a grand final. It, it almost doesn't matter because they're going somewhere. And I think, I think the game of rugby league is in a very healthy state. Now, the more people get suspended at the start of the season, I understand all the backlash. But we're now getting a very disciplined sport that can only, and the, the sport can only exist as it does now. So those who want to go back to the 70s and 80s to the 90s, and some of the, I mean, these are anecdotes, the nice stories, it was brutal and horrible, and the game is faster, it's fitter, it's, it's you know, we've not got another Paul Schoolthor or another Elry Hanley, but at the minute we don't need it, they will come. Like Mike says, when, the, when, when Warrington are doing plans like this, the 25 at all those clubs, someone will come through that. But you've got to build from that base. So I'm not concerned about the future of the game. I'm not, I'm not overly hopeful of IMG. And I don't really think they, that, they matter that much because we'll succeed and we'll come through whether IMG ideas work or not. Because when they didn't work or work last time, we still have got the game. The game will still survive. Um, I, I'm not sat there hoping that IMG... Um, and Eddie Hearn or whoever are going to rescue the game. I don't think it's rescuable in that state. You know, we're not going to become the NFL franchise like, you know, the Boston Red Sox. We're not going to be, there's a rugby union club in every town, city, village and hamlet in Great Britain, England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales. We haven't got a rugby league club in an, every town, village and hamlet. We've not. So let's stop trying to chase it. Let's just make us better at what we're very good at. It's almost a political statement, rugby league. I love it because of it. <coughs> Let's just exist with what we do. Tony, I think we'll, we'll probably coming to the end of this week's podcast. It has been fascinating. I'll come back to you for the final word. <laughs> Is this going to be Warrington's year? I hope so. I really do. <laughs> Get off the fence. No. Uh, yeah, I'd like to think so, Joe. You know, I've, I've seen some pretty good performances over, the, especially that you know, we've won. Is it ten out of the last thirteen? And you know, but watching the big game, you know, the Saints. You know, we come up against Saints in a big game, and, and they're able to you know, to turn up, and uh, you know, gives me great confidence going into some of these bigger games that are going to be coming up. It's a, the, the start of the season, you know, we, we lost the Catalans first game, and you can like go, yeah, okay. You know, the next six or so, I feel like we were expected to win. And although we, we went on a bit of a roll, you know, in my eyes, you know, Warrington should be beating them anyway. But when it came to Saints and away in that, in that big cup final, in, well, the quarter final, I thought, yeah, we're, we're in with a chance. And if we can, uh, if we can all stick together and, and, and get stuck in like they did that day, then uh, yeah, there's was, was every chance that we could. There you go, you heard it here first on the podcast at the Warrington Golf Club. This could be Warrington's year. Okay, that's it for the podcast. We will be back again next week, hopefully with Steve-O also in the hot seat. But for now, until the next time, from the Royal Warrington Golf Club, thanks to everyone here and see you next time.